Good evening, good evening, guys. Um, this is Jake, Miss JJ Diamond, Jackson Richardson, Jackie Deja, whatever y'all call me. Normally, I get on in the morning, but I've been very, very busy. Um, just doing some things and trying to get my mind together. I've been going through a lot, and y'all know how that can be. You know, when you um just going through so so much, you know, and you're trying to get your mind right, you know. So sometimes you just got to fall back, you know, and that's what I had to do, but. This evening, I want to talk about keeping your area where you live clean. Uh, I need to speak about that, you know. Uh, for all those that, that know me, um, I like to keep my area really clean. You know, outside and inside. You know, I, I can't, I don't feel comfortable, you know. And then when people come around, you know, to visit, you, know, you just never know who's going to be in your area. You know, just like yesterday, I'm, I'm going to talk about this as well. You know, I saw a young fella at the market. He was working at uh, Food Lion. You know, shout out to Food Lion. They hire all the young fellas. I'm so thankful to have Food Lion around. You know, they make sure they give all the black young fellas a job. You know, and um, he kind of pissed me off because he had his pants hanging down. And I'm seeing his butt, you know, and I'm saying to myself, like, nah. You, son, you, you got to pull up your pants, you know. But see, this generation, you have to explain to them why they need to do certain things, you know. So I had to come to him and tell him, I said, listen here, you never know when a person may walk through the door, okay, and they got some money, some real money, okay, and say, hey, I like your look, I like the way you act, I want to hire you. But you got your pants hanging down half of your butt, okay? It doesn't look good. And he stood there for a moment, and he thought about it, you know, and he said, ma'am, you're right. I said, yeah, I know I'm right. That's what I'm telling you. Where are you finding that? I'm on a podcast. How are you talking to me? That's disrespectful. See, that's another thing these youngins got to learn. When when someone is talking, you don't try to have a whole conversation with someone. I'm supposed to tell you where I found it live. Okay? I'm live on a podcast. Jesus Christ. I don't know what we're going to do with these kids. You know? I'm going to tell y'all a story. After I lost my home, I lived in the suburbs off of the water in Chesapeake Bay, um, Hartford County, Maryland. Okay? You know, Maryland is off of the Chesapeake Bay. However, I lived in a very... um, I would say low scale, and then I lived in a high scale area, okay? But both of the areas was clean, okay? Because it was the suburbs. When I lost my home, you know, and I had um, connected with a rapper in Baltimore. His name was Top Shotter. At the time, I was out in PA, and um, he told me, well, come on out here, you know, to Baltimore. And I used to work in Baltimore every day of my life for six years, okay? So I, was, I wasn't afraid to go to Baltimore. I knew a lot of people in Baltimore, and everyone respected me. Um, that's pretty much what it was, you know? So I was, you know, it's not like I was afraid to go to Baltimore. Plus, I'm from Cortland Avenue, okay, in the Bronx. And I've seen, been through a whole lot, okay? So not too much scares me. However, I was like, well, let me go on down here to Baltimore. But, you know, because they be killing up each other out there. I said, but I'm going to go anyway. So I went, you know, and um, I couldn't take it. It wasn't the killing that was bothering me. It was that the place was filthy. I just couldn't take it. I'm like, yo, I can't. Every time I walk outside. And I'm nature, people. Y'all know I love nature, Okay. And when I walk outside, all I see is is uh, uh, potato chips wrappers and juice bottles. And I'm like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I, I, I got to go. So I kept telling Top Shot, I said, listen, I got to go. So then I said, you know what? Okay, I, I can't go. Okay, I, I'm going. We're going we gonna to go out here and clean up this mess. I just can't take it no more. So I'm out there, right, cleaning up the stuff. And I'm asking, you know, some of the community work, the community people that live in the community for garbage bags, if they had any garbage bags, any brooms and stuff, because it's not my community. So I'm just cleaning up because I can't take it. It's just that nasty. 
So, um, this guy came out and he was like, sweetheart, what you, you know, I see you out here, you know, doing something. What you doing? I said, I'm cleaning up the community. I can't take it. He said, neither can I. I said, well, why you ain't telling nobody to, you know, clean up this place? He said, I don't know. He said, what you need? I said, I need garbage bags. I need a broom. I need this. I need that. So he went right in the store and bought everything that I needed. And he said, here you go. So I clinked up the joint, me and the kids in the community clinked up the place, you know. And after I did that, you know, there was a level of respect that they gave me, you know what I'm saying? And I was in the worst part of Baltimore. But I just couldn't, I couldn't deal with it, y'all. I just couldn't, you know. And I was telling them, you know, in Baltimore, I'm like, look. You know, and I was telling some of the drug dealers, you know, some of the OGs, you know, and I'm like, listen, I, I know this is Baltimore. Y'all supposed to be on top of your game. You know, I'm from New York and we do things a little bit different. We take care of our community. You know, y'all think that because it's New York that, oh, oh you know, there's a lot of bad things that's been said about New York and about New Yorkers. No, we're very clean, respectful people. OK, it's just that people take our, take us out of our character and then we have to show that side. But the real to it is we are very calm, collective, loving people. So he looked at me. And he said, so, so what you thinking? I said, listen here, you see all of these. I'm, I'm hearing that there's been dead bodies found in the in the cut. I'm hearing that a girl got raped in the cut. I said, it's your job to run your community. OK. And he said, well, tell me what I need to do. I said, now, y'all come through this community. I, said, I asked him, I said, what do you do? You know, how do you maneuver through your day? You know? And he told me, he said, well, you know, I had one guy that worked, one guy that was on, you know, that's, that did the street thing. I said, what time do y'all normally come out? He said, well, we, you mean go to bed, okay? So most of them go to bed, like, 6, 7 a.m., okay? I said, well, 6, 7 a.m., you see all these cuts? Y'all should be th driving through these cuts to make sure there ain't no no dope things out here dead, no kids out here dead or being raped. Y'all supposed to regulate this place, okay? Well, they put it together between them, okay? And it made me so proud, you hear me? It made me so proud. I woke up the next day, and I seen them driving through the cut, okay, back to back. Cause they, they stay together, back to back. One to come, then the other one to come. They stop and they look, make sure ain't nothing going on in the cut. Come back around, drive the hood, okay? And it brought tears to my eyes because they saw it worked. This is your community, okay? Wherever you live, that's your community. And we have to take care of our community, not just the kids in the community, but the actual community. By us taking care of our community is based on what we are offered by the government. OK, when the government comes into our communities and they say, OK, these people ain't no good. I don't care, care what the, the, uh, the, the statistics say that this is supposed to be a decent area, but based on what we see. They don't deserve X, Y, and Z. So we'll give it to these people over here. Okay? That's the way it works. You have to take care of your community. They know when they step in your community, if the community is the type of community that comes together. Okay? Now, if they can roll into a neighborhood and see, like in my neighborhood, Right now, my neighbors, they got a hose outside. Don't nobody touch their hoes, but they have it outside. Okay, we respect them. I know they left it there possibly. If we do want to use it, it's okay for us to use it. But we respect their property. Okay? If a community person came in this community, they would know that we are community. Because that hose is there, laying there, and nobody's touching it. They can tell when it's kids... Uh, um, toys or kids' scooters or bikes left outside and there's nobody around. They know that that's a community because the, 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 um, the items are left out there and nobody touches it. 
They can tell what type of community it is. Okay? We as human beings have to protect ourselves. Not only from the streets, from the government as well. We don't want the government to come in and say, okay, this is a bad neighborhood. So we're going to mistreat them. In other words, the cops are always coming around, harassing people, okay? There's always drama. You don't want that type of neighborhood because then you're put on a block, okay, at the police station. Then they start taking pictures of you. They want to listen to you. Okay, let me tell y'all a story. Back when I was about 17 years old, okay, 16, 17 years old, my daughter's father... He had got on drugs and um, start bugging out a little bit. So one of the the uh, area drug dealers told him, said that the cops is around here. I need you to get the cops out of here. So bust the cop car window. This idiot does it. Okay. So he winds up going to jail. Okay. So I go to the jail. Everything happens for a reason. Okay, just to tell, tell you how God works. God needed me to see this. I go to the jail. And when I get there, I see pictures of myself and my whole community on a board. Okay. Me in several pictures. That's been taken and they're in on a board in the police station God needed me to see that that we were being watched every single day and pictures taken of us every single day why would you want yourself to be a statistic and being watched every move you make It's just the facts. And this is what they do. Another time. Living in the Bronx. My son's father. He got in, got into some crap. Got arrested. As soon as he gets to the precinct. They put all the pictures on the table. And he said, he said, Jackie, there's nothing I can say. They had pictures of me. What can I say? They only target those neighborhoods that the cops is being called in a lot. People are always outside in the nasty communities. You want the police to feel like this community is dead. I, we, we, ain't got, we ain't got time for this one over here. Let's move on over here to this community. See, that's how we do in the suburbs. Because they have to do the same work in the suburbs too. But if you don't give them any work, what they going to do? Sit in their car, drink coffee, and eat donuts. We don't have no fat, fat cops here in Charlotte. Because they always working. Okay? I want fat cops. Well, not, not really, not really. I don't want fat cops. I'm lying. Because I don't want them to be getting sick from eating all them donuts and drinking coffee and eating fried chicken because they ain't got nothing to do. So, no, we don't want that. We want them to live, too. You know what I mean? But the facts of it, people, is you keep your community a certain way, you're not even looked at. And that's just the bottom line. Okay? Your community worth is documented. Like, I live in condos, okay? 
Based on the way the community is kept, it's based on how they sell. Now, like in my community, y'all see how I fix my balcony up. I'm not the only one in the community that has my balcony set up and uh, lights and flowers and, you know, different things. There's other ones, too. When people come through to buy, buy property, they're looking at all of these different things. Okay? Okay, I like the way they do that. Okay, yeah. This must be a nice community. Okay. That's how you get good people to come in and purchase the property. Even if they're going to rent. Because then you know that they're the type of people that want to take care of their property. We don't want people coming in, buying property, and then slumlords. They're just buying the property just to throw you in an apartment, charge $1,200, $1,600, $1,600 for the apartment, and then they bounce out on you, never fix anything. I have a friend right now that's living in a complex that has an issue. Now, this is a complex that I'm talking about. And they won't fix it. So that's a whole complex slumlord. Because they don't do right either. They look at you, stereotype you, and say, oh, well, I'm going to do what I do. It's not fair to us, the people that work hard. I don't care where you get your money from. But if you paying your rent on time every month, you're supposed to get the services that you deserve. And that's just the bottom line. Okay? Everybody got their hustles, they, the way they, you know, make their money. And I don't stereotype nobody because I've been there. Get greater later. But you still have to take care of your community. That's just the way it is. Okay? So I just want to throw that out there. Let me tell you something. Let me tell y'all a story about Buffalo. I made a lot of money in Buffalo, Buffalo, New York. I was well respected, okay? When I say I made a lot of money, I meant I made a lot of money. My name went from one side of Buffalo to the other, okay? Not only because my brother had so many kids, because I put my work in, okay? I was respected because I worked hard. Even though I was doing wrong. And I did. I mean, I left wrong alone a long time ago. But even though I, I was doing wrong, I was putting that money back into the community. So when the cops saw me, they drove past and waved. Because they knew I was doing wrong. They knew they could arrest me. They knew I was putting money back into the community. I made their job easier. So sometimes the police would turn their they back on certain things if they know you're doing it for the greater good. And I'm not saying go out there and, and, and um, sell drugs or, or, or do wrong trying to plan the greater good. But what I'm saying is they saw a person that didn't have nothing and I had no other choice. And I worked hard doing it and worked hard taking care of the community while doing it. They didn't have to worry about no teenager walking the street when Deja was there. At night, they didn't have to worry about no teenager getting hurt during the night. I would give the kids parties. I would feed the kids. Okay. Nobody went hungry in my neighborhood. Nobody wanted for anything in my neighborhood. Let me tell y'all what happened. This guy, he ran over I mean, he let his dog um, kill my cat. Everybody knew I love my cat so much. Um, yeah, you know, I love animals. I love them, you know, because they, they precious little things. And God has appointed us to take care of those animals, you know, not to hurt them and 
not to allow them to get hurt. But my cat was um, rebellious. He he was good when we was in New York City, but when we moved to Buffalo, he felt a little wild. You know, he decided he wanted to go out and be in the wild. You know, and it was funny because. They start calling him the Jamaican drug dealer, you know, because he'd be walking around the corner, you know, <laughs> you know, and they'd come and be like, Jackie, I mean, well, Deja, they call me Deja in Buffalo. Deja, um, yeah, yeah, uh, your cat is around the corner, that Jamaican drug dealer. And I said, why y'all call him that? And he said, because he'd be on his own thing, just doing his own thing. And I said, yeah, I know. Anyway, long story short, um... The dude had a pit bull. Now, I love pit bulls, okay? But the dude had a pit bull, and he let the pit bull uh, shake my cat. And when I came outside, I said, yo, tell him to stop. And he was like, for what? Like, he didn't give a fuck. Like, oh, excuse my language. I'm not supposed to curse on here. Y'all please forgive me. He just didn't care. Like, oh, well, it's just a cat. What do you mean? That's my family member. I've had him since he was pink. I said, okay. I said, okay, this is how you feel? So I went in the house. I just walked away. Because when I'm angry, I don't argue. Okay? So I went in the house. I walked away. I went and got my shotgun. So I'm putting bullets in my shotgun. And I guess they could hear it. And I heard them screaming like, yo, she about to, she's going to shoot you. So you better leave, you know. And um, as I'm coming to the door, I saw him take off running. But the dog was still there with the cat. So then the cat looked up at me. Smart, I mean, dog, I'm sorry. The dog looked up at me. My, do- my cat was blunt by this point. And um, he looked up at me and he dropped it. No, no, he took off running. I'm sorry, he took off running. So now I jump in my van, right? And I'm I'm chasing... I didn't know which way to go, to chase the dog to get my cat or chase the dude for allowing the dog to eat my cat. I I, I was bugging, you know? I was just... I went straight crazy for a moment. So the dog had my cat, so that's what I was focused on. So I turned and and I went and um, I got the dog. The dog had my, my cat, and I just rammed my my van. I just took my van and just kept ramming it into the dog and ramming it into the dog and ramming it into the dog, hitting him against the pole and ramming him. I had a big burgundy van. Um, and uh, the Italians, they, you know, they always sold me nice vehicles, but I tore the vehicle up because I rammed it into the pole trying to kill a dog because he had my cat. He wouldn't let my cat go. So I just kept ramming and ramming it. And so he went lemon. Then he let my cat go. So now I pick up my cat, right? Put my cat in the truck. And um, I go down to the police station. And I'm like, y'all, I know y'all going to take me to jail. I said, I just killed the dog, you know. I said, but I'm here to turn myself in, you know. And they start laughing at me. And um, I said, well, what y'all laughing at? They said, well, you got to get out of free, get out of jail free card today. Okay. Deja, go home. Just go home. Take your cat and go home and grieve. On the norm for killing an animal, the way I did, I would have went to jail. But the reason why they didn't, because they knew I was a good hearted person and I took care of the community. So they turned the other, they turned the cheek, okay? And I cried. Let me tell y'all something. I cried and cried over my cat. I cried over the dog because I love animals. But he was attacking my, my, it was like he was attacking my baby. I say all of that to say. When people see you doing good, rewards come behind it. Okay? Someone is always watching. 
This is why we try to do right. Because we know someone is always watching. This is why. It's not that we want to do right. We get urges to act out. Yes, we do sometimes. But we know someone is always watching. You don't want to have on a record that that face that you have is totally bad. Let me tell y'all this story. (laughs) Y'all go from story to story because this stuff is real life stuff, I'm telling y'all. I'm in Baltimore. Same weekend I cleaned up. Before I start cleaning up. That's what kind of made me start cleaning it up because my mind was all messed up. In two days, and I never tell y'all a lie, in two days, 56 people were shot. 56 in two days in one community within a five mile radius. Okay, this was years ago. Now, I was I was like, this this is crazy. I wrote on Facebook, fifty, they killing them, and I thought I guess he thought I was bugging, but I wasn't. It was the truth. I'm sorry, Baltimore. This guy, I gotta tell him. You know what I'm saying? They had a sniper on the buildings. Shooting them down. Okay? I don't want to see my people being shot down by snipers because you're not controllable. This is what they do. You're treated like animals when you conduct yourself like an animal. They want order. Give them order so they can turn your turn around and, and not see anything. They don't want to take pictures. They don't want to shoot us. But they will. I'll never tell a lie. Y'all can go look at the statistics. Baltimore statistics, 2013. If I'm not mistaken, it was June. May going into June. 56 people in two days. Was was between snipe down and um shot. It's not a game, people. I want my people to know what they're capable of. So get it right. So you won't be part of a statistic number. They don't like us. Our skin color. That's more reason for why we should be disciplined. But y'all don't get it. Nice. Did a good job. (laughs) This is why... Like, I fight for my kids to have education. Because I don't want them to be a statistic. My grandson pisses me off so much, but I help him because I don't want him to be a statistic. 
the kids in Baltimore, some of the, I mean, Baltimore, here in Charlotte, I help as much as I possibly can because I don't want them to be a statistic. For those that don't know what a statistic means, you're part of a number, okay? Just like with the pandemic, all that's going to go down in history and you'll be a part of that number. All of those that died, all of those that lived, all of those that got COVID, all of those that got vaccine, those are the statistics. Well, they do the same thing in communities. They just don't tell y'all because they have a job to do. But I've been blessed to be able to see it. And be able to come back and tell my people what knowledge I've learned to try to help them. This is why we share the knowledge. This is why we teach. Because we have information that can be given to help the next being. Knowledge is power. The more knowledge you got, you have, the more power you gain. And that's just what it is. We, as human beings, this period have to learn how to discipline ourselves and f- being followers. That's the other thing. I want y'all to learn to stop being followers. Especially towards bad. If someone is telling you that it's bad. And you, you're still doing it. It means you're a follower. You want attention. But there's other ways to get attention. The government wants to categorize it as having ODD. Oh, they just have compulsive disorder. They want to categorize everything as a disorder today. It's something wrong with their mind. No, it's not nothing wrong with their mind. They need to be told and taught. That's it. And then if they still start acting up, then y'all do what y'all do. I'm going to tell y'all another story. And then I'm going to get up off of here. Because I got things to finish up. I used to work for Bronx Lebanon Hospital. Okay. And I was working a psych ward. There was this lady. She came in. And she was bugging. She was bugging. All right, first she was talking to me. She was talking and she was telling me. Because I had to sit with her make sure she didn't do nothing. She wasn't post it. So she um she was doing some some craziness. She was doing some craziness. And um when she was doing this craziness, I was just shaking my head like Lord Jesus, like what is wrong with her? She was spitting on people, she was just doing all kind of mess. Okay. So now the next day, she was still at the hospital, of course. And they said, um, since you was with her yesterday, um, Jackie, and she didn't uh, mistreat you, why don't you go with her? So I said, oh, okay. So I went. But when we got in the, in the van to go to the psych place on Pelham Bay area, she spit on me. Okay, and I looked at her. I said, you don't remember me from yesterday? And she was just blabbing off. She was just going off, going off. <clears throat> when we got her up there to the psych ward, they stuck little pins in her head. Okay? All in her brain. 
to monitor her brain waves. It was the craziest thing I ever seen. It was like something out of a movie. And I vowed that I would never, ever act crazy. Because you never know where you're going to go. They may take you to jail or they may take you to the crazy house. And depending on how they feeling or what they want to know about you. You might wind up in that room, that white room with all that silver stuff and pins stuck up all in your brain. Okay. I said, y'all ain't got no problems out of me. You won't be sticking stuff in my brains. I took her back. That was the last I seen of her. She disappeared the day after that. I, I don't know where she went. I don't know if she got discharged. What happened with her? This is real life stuff I'm telling y'all. Okay? It's not a game. <coughs> I get it. I know we would sometimes, you know, we're subjected to a lot of things in our life. You know, I was subjected to a whole lot for those that had read my story. Okay. And there's probably people around that's been subjected to more than what I've been subjected to. You never know a person's story. But your your story don't have to end that way. Okay? You have a choice. And that's the choice is to make your life what you want it to be. Sometimes we get caught up with addictions. Sometimes, you know, we get caught up with illnesses. <clears throat> Sometimes we get caught up with just life situations. And we have to learn that that's not the end. You determine where your life goes. Is it going to stop here or is it going to go further on a better route? You have to make that decision. You have to make the decisions based on how you want your life to be. We can sit back and dream. I met a guy the other, yesterday. Yesterday, two days ago, two days ago. He's a rapper. <coughs> and he was like, I always support all the rappers. Okay, why? Because I'm in the music industry and that's my job to support my fellow co-worker. Okay, in any job that I'm in, just like when I'm working at Amazon. If my co-worker need my help, I'm going to help my co-worker because we, we're there doing the same thing. So he was out there, you know, and he was selling his CDs and, you know, you can see it in his face, the frustration, you know, and um, I said... Come here, come here. I wanted to show him like my my what I was doing with my lemonade and stuff. <coughs> he looked at me like I was crazy. Like, how was that going to make any money? Like, and I'm looking at him like, okay, how are those CDs going to make any money? Same difference. You're making a sale, okay? But the difference is, once you sell out all them CDs, you got to go re up and do it again. Then you're going to get big. Okay, you might get out here, get some shows, you might become famous. But then one day they're going to forget all about you because somebody else has um, did the same thing that you're doing right now. He just looked at me, you know, like, oh, it's all about the marketing. Yeah, you're right. However, if you don't. Take your money and use it right. You're going to be stuck in that same rim. Meaning you're going to be big and broke. Okay. And I try to tell them all the time. Why do you think most of the, the music artists have jobs? It's a lot of them. Majority of the ones in Atlanta, they work. Most of them in New York, they work. 
Same with LA. They work in their business owners. Get a job. That's the way we do it. We work. Granted, yeah, y'all heard the stories of how a lot of the 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 drug deal, I mean the, the rappers sold drugs and did this and the, did that. And that's how they came up. But they had to deal with a lot as well. They had to look at the people in the street looking at them. They had the industry looking at them. They had the police looking at them. That's not the type of life you want to live. Look at T.I., for instance. Now, we all know T.I. used to be in the streets. He met his nice woman, his wife. She was in the music. He's in the music. They built a family. He took the money that he made, opened up a restaurant. His wife opened up a um, a hair a rolling hair salon, I believe. So even though he did bad, he t- took bad to make good. That's why he calls himself the king of the south because he's he's he done it the best. He took bad with music and turned it good. That's the way it works. I mean, they got other issues and stuff, but that's they they personal problems. But for the for the most part, the overall part of it. They put something together. They built a table. Okay? A foundation. When they start talking about building a table, when y'all hear that all over, that's another thing. I hate when they be telling y'all these things online and don't break it down. (coughs) Because y'all don't understand. The table, when they talk about building the table or the table... What you bring into the table, you know, they, they they had this post. I am the table. What you bring into the table. We're building our table. When they say that, they mean the foundation of whatever you're trying to do. Okay. There's nothing in this world out here that can be built with just one person. You have to have a group of people that sit down at that round table and say, we're going to do this. We're going to stick to the to the script. And this is the way it's going to go. We're going to stay low key. No matter what y'all doing. It could be doing something legal or illegal. It don't matter. You're going to stick to the script. script and we're going to stick this out together. And this is how we're going to build our foundation. That's what building a table is about. Coming together to build a foundation. You can't do it by yourself. God told us that when he made Adam and Eve. He said, Adam, you can't run this by yourself. It's just too much. So I'm going to give you Eve. Y'all do it together and create some more peoples to do it with y'all. Meaning their kids. And that's what they did. We ain't going to talk about the bad stuff and the apple and the serpent. And we're going to talk about all of that. Because even after the, the serpent and the apple, Eve and Adam was still together. And they had kids. And their kids had kids. They all was responsible for something. I can't think of all their names right now because I... It's hard to remember their names and then remember the names of the people that I deal with on a daily basis. But <coughs> one of them, I get them mixed up. Ain't came able with one of them. One of them kids, he had to take care of the, the flock. Meaning the animals. Then one of them had to take care of the, the plants. They all had a job to do. 
They got the fighting, but they still had a job to do and was responsible for that job. Nothing is ever perfect. This is why the Bible was designed to give us an idea on how to live life. Everybody has a responsibility and has to be responsible for their actions. And that's just what it is. You can't overlook a negative action. It must be evaluated and uh, uh, fixed. Because then you walk around thinking my negative action was okay. And then you go and try it again and again until you get to that one person or that one thing that just won't tolerate it. Or you get to that one, say, neighborhood that won't tolerate it. So it's something to think about, people. You got to, you got to say to yourself, am I in this to win? You know what they say? You know, there's a song out. What's that song? Um, no. Um, bad luck, I think. I, I, I just got bad luck. Everything is about bad luck. Sometimes our, our bad luck is created. We create our own bad luck. We create our own karma. Bad karma. By the negative things that we do. Then you want to blame the whole world for what you've done. But you've done all of this negativity. And got all of this negative stuff around you. It comes back. You put out good and love. Good and love comes back. You put out negative. Negative comes back. That's the way it worked. That's the way God designed it. And there's nothing we can do about it. But follow. When you want to follow something, follow God. Because he's not going to steal us wrong. Granted, yeah, I talk about God almost every single day. Y'all don't hear me preaching about God, though. And the reason being is because I'm not perfect. And I don't want to be perfect because the only one that was perfect was Jesus Christ. And what did they do to him? You see what that taught me by me reading that story? As long as you are almost perfect, but not perfect, God can still use you. He can still take you through testimonies. When you're perfect, he can't, he can't use you no more. It's clear in the book. God wants people that can give testimonies. That can say, I've been through this and I came through it because of the grace of God and the discipline within me. If you can say, I've been through this, 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 and this, but my faith in God brought me out. Those are the people that God loves. I'm not saying he don't love the others, but those are the ones that he loved the most. Because we're going to constantly tell people what God has done. We're going to talk about him every day. We're going to pray to him every day. Our faith is going to be strong every day. Not just when we need something or not when our people are sick. We want to pray. We want to pray every day. Those are his true warriors. The ones that pray every single day. Because they know the things that God has brought them out of.
God is a good God. He's an amazing God. God loves everything he put on this earth. He takes care of everything. Okay? Including us and we don't see him. Our food is right outside. The plants. The herbs. All outside. He told us we would never be hungry. But we've designed ourselves to starve to, to starve to death. We've done that to ourselves. Moved to North Carolina taught me a lot, y'all. I came from a home where we grew our food in the Bronx. But God had to open up my eyes and say, wait a minute, hold on. I taught you this a long time ago. Don't you ever tell me you hungry. All right, I'm going to bail you out this time, but you better get it together. Get it together. Because he gets tired too. And when God gets tired... Just like human beings get tired, he take you home. With him. Enough is enough. There's going to be some people that listen to this podcast right now. And going to say, you know, damn, yeah, I do need to change my life. Let me at least try. There's nothing wrong with trying. Trying is always a step closer to getting your life in order. I had a young boy tell me the other day. Yeah, I'm going to start picking up some books and reading them again. I said, okay. So I gave him a book. And um, I said, well, did you read my story? And he said, yeah. He said, yeah, I'm still reading. I'm reading some other ones, the other stories too. I said, okay. He said, I told you it's not a game. I, I want to start to read again. You know how happy that made me feel? That a young black brother... Wants to read again. Because we don't got so caught up. In everyday life situations. That it makes us stupid. Now my faith holds that. One day. He would pick up the Bible. And just say that this is, that's the only book around. And read it. And learn some things. About life. Life is not as hard as y'all think it is. It's really not. We make it that way. What we go through as children, we can't control. But once you get to an age that you're able to care for yourself, we can control how we deal with life situations. You know, since I see kids and their parents are making decisions for them and I'm just shaking my head like, oh God, this poor baby. But once that baby get 18, if it makes it, it will be able to make the decisions for himself. I met a couple <clears throat> at the store, I was, um, the day I was, matter of fact, the day I was buying my Glock, I met a couple, they was in the store, and they had a newborn baby, and they was telling me how their family stereotyped them because they want to eat vegetables and don't want to eat meat, and 
saying all of these things that um, they're going to hurt their baby by not eating the proper way. And, you know, I just looked at both of them, you know, because they came into an agreement with themselves together. So I told y'all it takes two. That's the way God designed it. And and that man and that woman and their baby, their baby, they said, this is what we're going to do. This is the choices we're going to make for our child. And we're not going to allow nobody to step in, not our parents, no one, and tell us. They can stereotype, they can say what they want to say, but this is how we're going to raise our kid. And I told them they wasn't wrong. Just because your parents think they know so much because they've been living longer, but most of the time they've been taught the wrong way as well. And then they teach you the wrong way. That's how it gets started, the domino effect. And then it goes on and on and on and on. You have to change that domino effect. You have to do that. When you become 18 and if you see some things that wasn't right in your life, it's up to you to make that change. Just like my parents, both of them, they, they used to drink, use drugs. I got to follow behind them. Even though both of them got off of drugs later in their lives. I got to follow behind them and said, this is what they do, so why don't I do it? But I seen what they were doing and what it did to my life. So why would I do that to my, my kids? So why would I do that to myself? Put the same pain that I went through... On my children. That's just straight stupid to me. Straight crazy. <coughs> Why would you do that? Or being in pain. Because of something somebody else did to you. And you turn it and do it, do it to them. That's stupid. If it's been done to you, why would you do it to somebody else? Because you know what the pain feels like. That's why God put us through situations. Even though sometimes we lose in a situation, but you're not really losing because you're learning. And anytime you're learning in a situation, you win. Because you've gained more knowledge and more power. So a loss is really not a loss because you gain knowledge. That's the way it works. It's still a win. You just may not have won what you wanted to win. We don't always win what we want to win. <coughs> Very rare. Just like with myself. I was able to get my, my stuff trademarked. We don't always win that. But because I've lost so much. God took me down the channels to lose so much to gain. If I sat down and talked to y'all for hours and tell y'all how much I've lost in my life. To lead up to a gain. That means more to me than anything in this world. Because I know how many people can't get it. So you can't always look at yourself and say, oh, I'm going to always be a loser or I'm unlucky or things are never pretty much letting your mind play tricks on you because that's what you're doing. 
This is why we need to meditate. I know y'all hate to hear it. We need to meditate. Open up your third eye, meaning clear your mind. I'm going to break it down to you people. What it means. Clear your mind when you meditate. So you can see further than what you already see. It's a gift God has given all of us. But we let our minds play tricks on us. So we fail. Because the mind is very strong. Your mind can even get addicted to believing that you'll never be anything. You'll never succeed. But you have to clear your mind so you'll be able to see that you will be able to succeed. That's why I say, you know, they need to break things down to you guys. That third eye just means you're clearing all of that baggage out of your brain so you can really see. Because when you have a lot on that brain... Your mind is constantly thinking about what's on the brain. So you can't see anything but whatever you're thinking about. It could be right in front of you and you can't see it. Because you're so focused on something else. Have y'all ever been in front of something that you've lost? And it's sitting right there. And you're constantly looking over it, looking for it. That's because your brain is crowded. Our brain is designed to hold a lot of information. But it's also designed to store information. This is how we learn. We learn, we store the information. Sometimes we don't use it, so we forget. But then once we start using it again, it comes right back to us. And we're like, oh, damn. Okay. Because our brain is designed to store memory. Once you release some of that pressure, because that's what it is. It's a bunch of pressure. Once you release that and store it where it needs to be stored, you open up more of your... Your your other part of your mind. So now you can see other things. And it's crazy that people don't get it. Because our iPhone is is designed just like the brain. It gets crowded. And then you need more storage. So you got to put it in cloud storage. In order for you to get your texts. the, The phone calls and your pictures. Okay? Fortunately, we have to buy that. We don't have to buy our brain space. But the the iPhone is designed just like our brain. And we have to learn how to clear that storage. And get rid of it. Some of that negativity. Get rid of it. The good stuff we store in the back. Hold on to that. And we open up our brains and receive some more information. That's the way it works. There's a lot of things that I couldn't see for a long time. But until I started meditating again, because I used to meditate when I was young. That's how I was able to see a lot. People said, yo, she's so smart. My IQ was very high. It's because I learned how to store my my stuff early. Because my people used to make me read all the time. It was so much. So much. I was reading, 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 reading. Just kept reading and reading and reading. And it could actually drive you crazy. So you got to find a way to store it. So that way you can grasp a hold of all of the information. Instead of it, it spinning in your head and driving you crazy. One minute you're thinking about this and the next one you're thinking about that. And the next one you're thinking about this. And now you, you bugged out. 
And they wonder, well, why is this person acting like this? They got too much on the brain. It's just too much on the brain. When you see people starting to act like that, they don't know what they want to do. They're unsure about life. It's because they got too much on their brain. So, what you do is meditate and clear a lot. So you can see what's really going on and what moves you really need to make. Because you couldn't see it before. You just couldn't see it. But then now you see it. Because you've put that stuff in storage. And hold on to it. So I hope this podcast is, is, is able to help some people today. You know, and if not today, maybe tomorrow. You know, people listen every single day. And I love you guys. Charlotte, shout out to you guys. I see y'all listening heavy. And y'all listening to the podcast. That's big. I'd rather y'all listen to the podcast over the music any day. Because I need us to be able to live and live happy. Every day is not going to be a good day. But we can't let it beat us down every single day of our lives. Because things done went wrong. Hey, people would say to me, when I first moved in, I would tell them my story. And they're like, nah, I ain't no way in the world all of that happened to you. You would lie. It did. But it's all on how you carry it while you're going through it. People would see me come out of my house. These nice clothes on. Why is she poor? She had all these nice clothes. Oh, I'm poor. I'm struggling. Believe me. I can barely eat some days. But I took care of my stuff. stuff. So I have it when I'm broke. Some people don't even care about their stuff. They go from house to house, leave piece to piece, you know. And then they got to start all over, keep starting all over. So that's starting all over. It's not, it's not good. They have that in people's minds, you know. Oh, just start all over. Yeah, God thought so too. <coughs> he kept saying, let's start over. When Jesus Christ told him, nope, nope. Don't start over. Let, let, let me work with him. He was willing to die for him. I and mean, I ain't willing to die for nobody. Okay. Like I told you, I ain't Jesus Christ. But I'm willing to give y'all the knowledge. So we can live happy. Because every day is not going to be a happy day. But the less problems we have. That we can eliminate makes it easier to deal with. And that's the key right there. And that's why it takes two. You got to team up with someone you trust. It takes two. Because sometimes you may not see something, but they might see something. And I know it's hard for us to trust people today, you know. That's why I worked hard. You know, when I first came to Charlotte, you know, they kept saying, oh, Charlotte's on the the bad list for this, the bad list for that. You know, oh, the the women are ugly and they all fat and they this and they that, they're all sick. And and I start watching, you know. I'm like, damn, every time I walk down the street, I mean, driving down the street, here come an ambulance. Yeah, they all sick. Okay. Okay, the ladies are thick. They're eating a lot of chicken and doing squats. Because they do squats here in school. (laughs) Okay? (coughs) My daughter came home. I'll never forget it. (laughs) She came home and said, Ma, I was at the gym today. Let me show you what I was doing. We was doing squats. I'm like, they got my baby doing squats. My baby going to have a big damn tail. (laughs) People think I got the gun for protection. No, I got the gun because these boys going to be chasing her and I'm not with it. Okay, that's just the facts. Because they had had my baby doing squats. So she can have a big old dunk-to-dunk booty. 
every state is different. This state like they women to have these big old booties. That's what they like to say. I get it. But it causes conflict. In people's lives. I wasn't feeling that. Then they say, okay, the girls don't look all that great. So I'm, I said, let me see. Now, the girls that I was seeing, I was like, that I was around, they was looking pretty decent. I'm like, okay. No, the girls don't look that bad. It's just, they country. And these guys that come here from the South, I mean, they coming from the North or the West Coast. And they're like, okay, these girls are really country. Like, this is not what we're looking for. We lost our damn, um, one of our biggest events. So I said, okay, I'm going to start showing them how to do this thing. We got to be cute, ladies. You know, we got to act cute. Okay? We got to watch how we speak. You know, how we walk. How we talk. And we're going to get some people, some men's up in the city. So y'all can have some husbands. Because it takes two. That's the way it works. Now I'm out here too right now. Struggling trying to find me one too. So I know the pain. I'm going through it right along with y'all. But it's going to happen. You just have to get it together. My governor wants us to have a star state. I know y'all don't know because y'all don't never pay attention. That's what I'm saying. Though. Meditate. Open your mind so you can see what's going on around you. Our governor wants a star state. He wants his girls to look good. He wants his fellas to look good. Because when the money comes through the state, he wants them to pick us. Okay? When the money comes through, I'm going to say it again. When the money come creeping through, he wants the money to pick us. I'm going to say it again. I want you to understand this clearly. When the money start creeping through, He wants them to pick us. When money comes into the states <clears throat> and it stays, that means we get more in our communities. Okay? The more taxes people pay, the more houses people buy, we get better benefits. From the government. They put up funding for certain things. Like right now. We got some funding for. The cable. Not every area. Was selected. But they had some extra funds. So they gave it to us. That's the way it works. The more taxes that's being paid, the more things that they can sit down and evaluate and say, okay, well, you know what we can do with this funds over here? We'll take these funds that we got in the box over here since we didn't spend that much on medical last year because that's the biggest killer in every state, okay? When people don't have medical insurance. And everybody's running to the hospital for little stuff. Okay, you could have took a title Tylenol and drank some turmeric and went to bed. You would have been fine in the morning, but you ran to the hospital. And now that's another bill for the government. I, I'm, 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 I'm going to put it to y'all like this. You know, I brag about Maryland a lot because it's the richest state in America. I'm going to say it again. I brag about Maryland, Baltimore, the city with all the rats, all the killings, 
but they have outskirts. And it's the richest state in America. And one of the smallest. Not the smallest, but one of the smallest. Okay? <clears throat> My governor has a big state. There's no reason why we should be poor. So he had to evaluate that. And he said, okay, we're going to build. We're going to take care of our communities. We're going to help our people. And we're going to make us a rich state. Will we become the richest? We will never know unless we help our governor. And I'm going to say it again. You never know when a rich person is coming through. Recently, y'all know Floyd Mayweather. He's been coming back and forth to Charlotte. We don't know if he's thinking about moving here. His vehicles was caught in one of the richest areas in the, in the community. I mean, in, in, in the Charlotte area. I've seen him with my own two eyes. Scooting through. He's not coming here just to be and driving through communities just to be driving through communities. He could be getting ready to make a move. We have Diddy. He be coming through. He been looking at the football team. He's been doing that for the last couple of years. Seeing how to stay progress. I'm not saying them just in general because those are people that you know of. But how many people you don't know of, and I'm going to say it like this. <clears throat> we have billionaires that you've never heard of. That's richer than any celebrity. Okay? And they could be walking amongst us every single day. And they're just watching. I'm going to go rent me a hotel room. And I'm going to watch this state. I'm going to go, you know, for a few, few months. And watch and see what's going on. I may even get a job just to see how the people act. You just never know. When you're building a star state. You never know where the money's at. And when they're coming through. So we have to look good, act good, smile, because we want the money in our states. Because if we have money in our state, that means our wages go up. Why is it a job that I was doing 10 years ago? <clears throat> I started with 52000 10 years ago. Here, they only wanted to give me 54 when I should be making 70. Why? When the rent is the same. So, yeah, I hope y'all understand a little bit what's going on. Okay? The governor made a call that he wants a star state. Because his state was only looked at as a bad state. You know, 48 hours, you know. Because only celebrities that was in this state for real was the police. Those are the only celebrities that's really in this state, even though there's, uh, um, we have some. Um, because to, 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 I'm going to say to the entertainment world, you're not a celebrity unless you've been on TV. Okay, that's the way they look at it, for real, for real. OK. Um, and the only ones that have been on TV out of this state is the police. Everything else is local. But he's tired of it just being the police. It's always the bad. Just like with myself. I get tired of seeing my people 
on the news. This one got shot. This one went to jail. This one, and it's my people. The same color skin. And uh, I'm going to take it back a little further. I get tired of seeing my own blood people on the news. Okay? And in the newspaper. It doesn't sit with me well, people. And it shouldn't. So with that being said, <coughs> we got to help our governor. If he wants to start state, let's give it to him. We want money coming through here because I want to be paid $18, $19, $20 an hour within the next two, three years. Because remember, I work and I pay taxes. So can I get some money? I know y'all want some. This is what, you know, I, there was a McDonald's I, I was around. It's up there in PA somewhere. They, they area had so much money. They McDonald's was hiring managers at 70 grand a year. Made me look at McDonald's differently. I was like, hold on, I'll work there. For 70 grand, that's what I'm worth. At the time, that's what I was worth. Worth a little bit more now. But... <laughs> Moving down here, I downgraded. That's why I used to laugh when, you know, uh, Butterfingers on the radio station, 90, 98.7, uh, Power, Power name, whatever that it is. He would say, shout out to the people that came down and came up. I said, I took a decrease. What you mean? I used to laugh like, what the hell is he talking about? I took a, a decrease coming down here. The worst thing that ever happened to me. But he didn't understand that up north in the south, we make it twenty twenty five dollars an hour, and then I come down here to I'm only making ten, and that's good money. And if I'm making sixteen, I'm rich. If I'm making eighteen, oh, I'm big, big rich. What? You know, when the last time I made eighteen dollars an hour. Like, really? I will tip agencies pay us more than that up, up north. <coughs> so I, I, I laughed. Like, I was like, you got to be kidding me. When you when you're saying this, but he doesn't know because he's not in that state. But our governor wants a star state. Because he sees it being done in the south. Because Maryland is the South, whether you guys know it or not. It's right off the Mason-Dixon line, but it's still the South. You don't touch the North until you get to Delaware. Delaware is the start of the North. For those that didn't know. And rules change. So, he wants to be a part of, I don't know if it's, if you feel like if it's a new trend, the South getting money. Because <laughs> Maryland been getting money for years. I was living up there for 12 years. Been a part of Maryland life for over 16, 17 years. And they been getting money. Stay getting money. So I say that to say, it might have took a decade for the South to learn this, but they jumping on board. And we want to, we want to do it right. You know, we, we ain't got to do everything that they do, you know, because some of these big booties ain't going nowhere. Ain't nothing we can do about that. We're going to have our slim people. We're going to have our big booty people. Nothing we can do about that. But you won't go to Maryland and see no big tails. They ain't having it. They train their people differently. Every state is trained differently, people. I bet you y'all didn't know that. Some states be on the same thing, on the same wave. And other states don't. 
But it's going to be hard to get rid of some of these big booty women. My ex was happy to, to, to see my mine was getting a little bigger. And mine's are small compared to some of these women. He was like, oh, your, your booty getting bigger. And I'm like, oh, really? Okay. Oh, I'm starting to fit in, huh? And it's still little. So we know they ain't going, that, that ain't going nowhere. The booties ain't going nowhere. That's just North Carolina. But there's some things that will change in this state. And y'all have to get used to it. That's just what it is. Because we want more money. We want to be able to survive. We're tired of seeing people homeless. We're tired of seeing people hungry. Because they can't survive. They're living paycheck to paycheck. They're hustling. They're working two and three jobs. You know what someone told me in Maryland? If you got to work two jobs, then you need to get another one. That's what they told me. I said, oh, Really? And that's when they landed me with Frito. And I was still struggling a little bit because I had to figure out how it works. Because you with, with Frito, you make a lot of money in, in a, during a certain time frame. And then you ain't making no money. But I was still on a, a, a salary. So I was still getting paid, but I had to budget. I had to learn how to budget. But I was able to maintain two cars. $1,000 rent, seven family members. I'll get off in a minute. I got to get off and tend to my child. But I was able to maintain. I can't just cut it short. I have to finish what I'm saying. I had to maintain. I was able to maintain life. Without stress. Of course, I had some stress. You know, it's always going to be some stress. But not so much stress to where I couldn't think. I, I, I had to uh, um, be on some craziness and or, or do illegal stuff to maintain. I didn't have to be on it like that. Add a side business here and there that helped out. Sometimes I even took on two jobs when I had extra family members to take care of. But it was only me. Now, if there was two incomes coming in, I probably wouldn't have had to do that. If most people have two incomes, we will be able to make it. And that's what it's all about: survival. People, you picking you a person and you survive. That's just what it is. You pick you a compatible mate, whether it be woman, I mean, whether it be straight, gay, whatever what y'all people like, and survive. You trust and survive. We're not going to like everything. But we have to come to terms with certain things if we want to survive. See, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, the, in, the, in the, 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 the book of life. I like to survive. I don't like the extra stress. I don't like stress, period. I got enough stress with my allergies. Just trying to survive it. Some people have to... Illnesses, uh, uh, forget about cancer, okay? We look at cancer as being the worst thing ever. You know how bad it is to wake up and have to take 10, 15 pills a day to survive? There's some people out here like that. And it's not because they have a major illness. They have an illness that has to be maintained in order for them to survive. It's something to think about. You don't need to add it on stress. And all they're trying to do is make it better and easier for us. That's it. But we have to play our part as well. 
We don't play our part. We don't win. The government took on a job. And that's why most of the time they lie. Because they don't like to give some information to some and other information to others. Because then it can cause conflict. Which they call conflict of interest. So they do a lot of lying to us. So not, I ain't going to say lying. Not giving us the full story. Or giving us the full um, information. But we got to play our parts too. And that's just the bottom line. I don't know if y'all seen this video. And I'm getting ready to get off of here. It's a video. I was telling y'all yesterday. My um, nail tech. I couldn't find him. And it's Mother's Day. It's peak weekend. He you knows it's Mother's Day weekend. Why are you not working? Doing peak weekend. Peak week. Peak month. In any job. We work our tails off. And talk about it later. That's just a part of America. That's America's way. Okay? Just like even in the hospitals. They know during the summertime. Let me tell you something. Lincoln Hospital in the Bronx. Bronx, Lebanon, Jacoby. All them hospitals right now is getting ready for the summer weather. Why? Because during the summer, that's when their highest gunshot, stab wounds, people being busted upside the head with bottles are coming to the hospital. That's peak season for them. During the winter, they're cold. They're sitting down somewhere. They're in the house. Yeah. But during the summertime, everybody going crazy. So that's peak season. The same with getting your nails done. Mother's Day. This is especially stuff that us women love to do. You know, and, and we want to pamper ourselves. And he wasn't at work. I just couldn't understand it. I was pissed off. So I ordered up some stuff so I could fix my nails and my toes and stuff. So I, I'd be right for the weekend, right? So they put a little post on the damn, because, you know, when I talk crap on, on, the, on the thing, they always got something to do. To the uh, regarding, you know what I said. So the monkey, <laughs> the, the 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 light skinned monkey. I don't know if it was white or it was another Asian or whatever. I don't know. Was banging the Asian man upside the head. Like stupid. Like how stupid can you be? Do your part. Same with us. We have to do our part. Or we get banged right upside the head. And then we're angry and we want to blame everybody else. But for what we haven't done. We have to play our part as well. In order for the government to prove that they are for us. Because we're quick to say. They don't care about us. And sometimes I, I, I say that all the time. Because they hurt me big time. They've been hurting me big time. And it's nothing I can do about it. Until they decide to evaluate the situation. And say, damn, we are hurting these people over here. Let's fix this. The people that work the hardest to make the most money, they tear us down. And we be the poor ones. Barely surviving. Skinny because we can't eat. Y'all see me? Y'all think Duke Energy supported me because of my brand? No, they supported me because I keep my electric bill under $100. And I did it during our, during our cold, cold months this winter. That's why they were supporting me. And we'll talk about that next week on how you can keep your electric big bill down. Y'all see what I do. I burn the fireplace. That's free. Well, the wood, I buy it. But it could be because people give away wood all the time because they're cutting down land. And they have to do something with the trees. So people's always stacking up wood all over the place. Wood, take some. I just was too lazy to go drive and look for some. But I could have got me some for free. That's the bottom line. During the daytime when it's cold, I put on a jacket and walk through the house. I don't care. Judge me. I don't care. Talk about me. I don't care because when my bill come in, I'm going to be able to pay it because it's little. And I ain't got to go sit down at the place 
and beg the people for some money to help me pay my bill. Because I could afford to pay it. Damn. Damn, that's where you were. Damn. So, next Damn. week, I'm going to talk to you guys about um, adjusting. Because those monies that they give away for electric bills could be Damn. used for other things. Okay? In our city. Like people that have hardships. Or people that need a security deposits. Because y'all know here in Charlotte that we don't get security deposits. You know, you got in other states, if you find a place, they'll give you the security deposit. If you got the first month running. We, we don't get that here in Charlotte. That's a must have. But we can't get that because they so busy paying high electric bills. And running out of funding. So, come next week, I'm going to be teaching y'all how to keep your electric bills down. Well, y'all think taking showers is, is better? It's really not. Because the water is running for a long period of time. Still water, not running. So, you wind up losing, you lose less water taking a bath than you do taking a shower. So I'll explain a lot of that to y'all next week. So we here in Charlotte and North Carolina, period, can learn how to keep our electric bills down, how to live off the earth. So that way we can save money and not be running to these government entities begging because we messed up because we did not know how to do things to help ourselves. But we want to complain about these two, three, four, five, six hundred dollar electric bills. We not paying them on time because we can't afford, so we gotta wait till the turnoff notice comes. Yeah, they've been helping us out door throughout COVID, but that's over. The government is at the point if you catch COVID, you on your own. It's your choice. We done gave you a vaccine. We done taught you how to do things. You and y'all. So life is getting me to go back to the way it used to be. Ain't gonna be no um oh we ain't gonna send out no turn off notices anymore. Oh they coming. Cause people are getting back to work. Whether it be at home or outside. Because we still got to work. So I'm going to show you guys. And I'm going to. Well not show y'all. I'm going to tell you, teach y'all guys. Um, you know. How to do this thing. And you may have to invest some dollars. You know. On lights. And Duke Energy gives us lights. They've given us lights. They even have a faucet. Um, thingy. That Maryland gave us, I didn't get it here, but Maryland gave us this faucet thingy to help the water spray out less. It's very hard, but less, so you have used less water. So there's a lot of ways to save money, you know, and I'm going to break it all down to you guys to help y'all so we can get back in the swing of things and make this the state of Star State. Now we running around like chickens with our heads cut off because we ain't got no money and we, we out here buying two, three hundred dollar sneakers and no, we can't really afford it because we still got to feed them kids and pay the electric bill that we didn't pay. Now we down sitting at the place begging for money to pay the electric bill because we done bought two hundred dollar sneakers for our kids that we knew we couldn't afford. Yeah, we're going to get it right. You go to Baltimore, you go to Maryland. Very rare do you see anybody on with, with $200 sneakers on their feet. But it's a rich state. Their homes are their pride and joy. Their homes. 
Where they rest their head is their safe haven. That's where they spend their money on. And we're going to get there. Nothing is going to happen overnight, but we will get there. This is Jacqueline Richard Simmons, JJ Diamond, Jackie Deja, whatever y'all call me. I love y'all, Charlotte, and I will continue to teach as much as I get the information. I'll give it to you guys, but I need y'all to just follow through so we can have a beautiful state. I love it here. I love Charlotte so much. And this is the place that I came 20 years ago and said I would never live here. It was terrible. Mom. I'm getting off right now. It was terrible. I said I would never live here. And then when I came here, I met some of the people. And I said, yeah, these people are right. They just need to fix this place up. And they're working on it. Damn. And things is going to get better. Yeah, over a little bit. Damn. I love you guys. I'll talk to y'all next week. Y'all have a wonderful, safe weekend. Happy Mother's Day to everyone out there. And y'all be safe.